This is Marty Stewart with SeminarSecrets.com. You can hear the complete version of this big seminar interview by going to www.SeminarSecrets.com. Okay, Jonathan. Well, we're going to go ahead and pre-positive. i got both lines merged here, so people will be able to hear us on this call. So we're really excited about that. So, you know, that's the, that's the part about being uh, having a successful teleconference that people don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, with all the technology problems we have in Hawaii with phones and stuff, at first I thought it was me, but then uh, I realized that uh, it's such a successful teleconference that we're out of room. So... Uh, anyway, I'm really honored to be on, and I just want to thank you for uh, making me part of the big seminar. And to everybody who's listening to this, I want to thank you for being on the call. Um, I'm just blown away that so many people want to hear what I have to say, and so I'm, I've got a lot of good information for you, and uh, really looking forward to, to talking today. Sounds great. Well, Jonathan, you know, what I always like to do is I like uh, people to understand kind of the background of, of, our, of our speakers that are going to be with us at the big seminar. Uh, you know, so they have, they have a clear understanding that, you know, where you started from and, and kind of what brought you onto the Internet. And then I want to get into some of the things that you're doing today online. Okay. Um, so let, let's talk about this. I mean, prior to the Internet, I mean, what kind of a actual j j job did you have? Well, I came from, it's funny, a lot of people in the, in the Internet business come from the, the insurance industry, and that's the business that I came from originally. Um, I was doing uh, insurance sales, and we actually um, we were doing life and health and property casualty insurance, which is like fire insurance and liability and things like that. And um, I really hated a, a couple of aspects of it. I didn't like the industry uh, at all, and I didn't like the people that I worked with, and I didn't like my boss, and I didn't like um, the work and all the other stuff. And I, I hated more than anything else. Um, the insurance industry is an industry that is just, you know, when I was back into it, which was back in the in the 80s and the 90s, it's just like tailor-made for computers and automation. And they just refused to automate stuff. Um, you know, they have this um, philosophy, and I don't know if it's the same way today, but they have this philosophy that, you know, if you're not working hard, then, you know, it's, it's not real work. And um, so I, I just really dislike the industry, but... I was very lucky to work at a direct response insurance agency. And, you know, please don't think that this was, you know, the, the, the big direct response, you know, great marketing system or anything. We had a good system, and, um, and even though we were direct response, we were still insurance. But what really caught my eye was the fact that we could use direct response advertising, uh, primarily direct mail. Uh, this was pre-Internet, um, you know, telemarketing, postcard mailing, things like that, to generate a whole bunch of leads. And then every day we generate a bunch of leads and we turn those leads into sales. And um, I just got taken with the fact that there were sales letters and there were sales processes that we could implement and we could create business almost out of thin air. And so I basically got out of that business, uh, I think it was 1993, uh, I was politely asked by my boss to find another um, uh, career, <laughs> so, and it was very mutual. I mean, I was ready to leave, and they were ready to, to have me leave, and so I started my own company. I started CyberWave Media back in uh, 2003, and um, I started fooling around with direct mail. I, I started with BBSs and uh, AOL and CompuServe, and basically just using what we call the two-step method of, of Marketing. I just want to make sure. I just want to clarify something. You said 2003. I believe you meant 1993. Sorry, yes, 1993. Uh, I was so thinking, was... Jonathan, you've been online longer than a year. <laughs> <laughs> this was about 11 years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, at the time, we were using just two-step ads. And what two-step ads are, for people who don't know, it's when you put an ad in a magazine or a newspaper or a bulletin board or a classified area, and you simply collect leads. You just say something like, um, discover the easiest way to promote your business or, or you know, to use a, a non-Internet business. You know, discover the easiest way to paint your house or the easiest way to buy real estate. Free report reveals the simplest way to build a deck, you know, and increase the value of your, of your home or whatever. And at the time, we were using these two-step ads 
to promote um, a book on how to market, actually, using direct mail. And I used a lot of the examples that I got from the insurance industry and a lot of the case studies and a lot of the experience to um, really create kind of a process for marketing using direct mail, but getting the leads off of the Internet. You have to understand, Armin, this was before the web. Right. I mean, you know, back then... <clears throat> Yahoo was not at yahoo.com. It was at Stanford University. Right. And, and, it, and the URL was stanford.edu, and then there was a little tilde, the little squiggly thing, Yahoo. I mean, <laughs> this was before domain names. This was really before everything. Yahoo back then was a links list. And so in order to really market, we had to use this as a lead capturing device and then use some alternate method to get the sales message out. So we used direct mail, and it turned out that that process worked superbly well, and that's pretty much the process that we kept throughout the entire, um, you know, first part of our business. That sounds great. And, and now let me ask you this. I mean, now that was in 1993 when you first got online and started doing that. Now, people think on the Internet that strategies tend to change like people change their socks on a daily basis. Yeah. And now, but here's a question, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. Now, that same strategy, that same two-step approach, I mean, does will that or does that work still on the Internet today? Absolutely. Certain things have changed, right? There's new techniques. There's new ways. There's new technologies. But the primary method is to capture interested prospects, to follow up with them until they buy, and then to create a sales process that works the back end and gives them different products throughout the, um, the course of their life as your customer to actually purchase so that they can achieve whatever it is, whatever goal it is that they're looking to achieve. And if you are looking at the Internet as, you know, um, iframe pop-ups or, you know, I mean, to, to, to use your pop-up, uh, pop-over generator as an example, you know, there are people out there and they say, you know, I just got Armin's pop-over generator, and now I'm going to make money. <laughs> you know, or I just added audio to my website, and now I'm going to make money. Right. And you and I both know that if it wasn't making money before, if you didn't have a process or a system or a blueprint, it doesn't matter how many tricks and, and gimmicks and little things that you add to your website, none of them are going to make money. All those things, especially the tools that you've developed, are really revenue enhancers. Exactly. What's, what's fascinating is for people who don't get it, they can implement every one of those ticks, th those trips, tricks and techniques and everything. They don't make a lick more cash. For people who do get it, every time they do that, they see a, we'll call it a marginal increase in conversion rate, like tenth of a percent here, quarter of a percent there, half a percent there. All those things start to really add up. And in many cases, and I'll just use the example of, of audio, we took a site where we added audio to it, and I really did not know what would happen. You know, I was almost a skeptic, and I'm, I was hoping to, to prove everybody wrong, saying, well, this won't increase response. And it increased response by about 30% or a third of, of what we were getting. I mean, I couldn't believe that, um, that the audio worked so well. And all the other little things that we do are really enhancements, but they're enhancements to a core strategy. Right. And so one of the things I'm really going to be talking about is the core strategies, the blueprints that people can use in order to take a website and turn it from a money loser into a money maker or a money maker into an outrageous money maker uh, or, or basically, you know, Use these techniques, use this process, which, which we have partially developed and which some of which we just got from, you know, studying the direct marketing of the ages to really create a powerhouse of a business. Um, you know, I'm, I just want to say something, too. You're so nice. I mean, you just say that I'm, you know, the greatest marketer and, and you know, like I'm a hero or something. And I... I'm honored that you feel that way. To me, though, the real heroes are not the guys like me. You know, I just help people implement ideas. The real heroes are the guys out there listening to the call who implement the ideas, who actually go out and who use the stuff to make gobs and gobs of cash. And 
for anybody listening to this wondering, gosh, you know, is this going to be a bunch of newbies at the seminars? I am just shocked at the quality and intensity of the people who come to Big Seminar. I mean, you've got some real significant players and some very, very successful marketers. I mean, guys who are making, I mean, millions and millions of dollars a year, which to me is heroic, uh, you know, because it's easy to teach this stuff. It's hard to go out and implement it and get off your butt. And so, um, you know, while I'm honored to be, considered whatever one of the grand masters of marketing, the real masters are the guys listening to the call who are going to take the information and do something with it. Those are the guys that I really admire. And, you know, you know it's so true. You know, I, I was at a conference re- uh, recently this weekend, and I, I talked for about two minutes on a, on a subject uh, that I think is probably the most important things that I've, I've told people yet, and that is simply is that, you know, the majority of the people, even on this call right now, won't do anything which is the sad part. But the the people that do are the ones that are going to become successful online. It's not a matter of, it, it, it's not a matter of, like you said, it's not the it's not all the tricks, it's not all the tactics, so, so to say. It's usually, it's the, it's the time um, proven principles that, that will work. But the point is that you actually have to work them. They don't work by themselves. Yes, I, I know. Well, I'll tell you what's funny is that, and this is how I really knew that the big seminar had the right kind of people in it for me to go to and for a lot of the clients and stuff and people that we've recommended. And it's not just me. I mean, this happened to me, but I'm sure it happened to Stephen Pierce. I'm sure it happened to you. I'm sure it happened to Alex. I'm sure it'll happen to Yannick. I'm sure it happens to everybody. After my talk at the last big seminar, we had people who stopped what they were doing, and they went up to their room and they implemented one of the simple ideas that they had learned from the speaker. And, Armin, they had results the next day. I mean, people were coming back. One guy came back to me, and actually it was a woman, and she had her son with her. And I don't know if she's on the call now, but she said, you know, we tried that name squeeze technique. My son threw a little site up last night, started to throw some traffic into it. My God, you're right. Fifty percent of the people opted in. And this was a woman who was getting like 8 or 10 or 15% opt-in before, and she was just shocked. And I'll tell you what, as shocked as she was, I was doubly shocked because most of the people I taught that to didn't do anything. She stopped what she was. She didn't go and, you know, hang out at the bar that night or, or fool around, you know, with other marketers and stuff. I mean, not that there's not great networking. She had this bug on her butt to do this thing. She wanted to get this thing done. She wanted to see whether or not this process would work. She and her son went up. They implemented the thing. The next day they had results. That's heroic. That's cool. Implementation to me is, I think, is the key, and people wonder why, you know, oh, how I create product after product. It's not the fact that I'm any better or work any faster. Well, it might be because I do work faster. But, <laughs> but one of the things is implementation. One of the keys truly is implementation, and I totally agree. And let's let's just talk about that if you if you don't mind. Sure. The, about um, about that same strategy that you just described. Um, that strategy, um, and this is something I think um, you know everyone should write down. Just just kind of give everyone a quick overview of that concept. Well, basically, in the old days, we used to send them to a web page. And um, we might put an opt-in form on the site, and then hopefully they'll opt into our newsletter or using or whatever. And then we got a little bit more sophisticated, and we sent them to the site, and if they bought, then they went through the normal process. But if they didn't buy, we used an exit pop-up. And the exit pop-up would ask them to give their name and email address, and then it would put them on a follow-up system. Well, what we did is we said, you know, this 5, 10, 15% opt-in rate, I mean, that's great, but gosh, I wonder how we could really boost that up. So now what we do is we send them to the site itself. We send them to the opt-in form right off the bat. And, uh, I mean, almost all of our sites are like that now, the rollout site, the um, uh, testandtrack.com, all of them use some variation of that. We call it the name squeeze process because it's like a juicer that you put your visitors in, and it squeezes the names out of them. And um, I was, I don't know if they heard it from me, <laughs> but I was at a site recently, and I clicked on a banner ad for the Republican National Committee. And 
good God, they were using the name squeeze technique. <laughs> Before you could get into the site, you had to give your name and email address to just view what they were trying to tell you. And I'm not partisan or political. I mean, hey, I live in Hawaii. You know, I'm a member of the Aloha Party. But one thing I thought of was, boy, if the Democrats don't use name squeeze and the Republicans do, I feel very sorry for the Democrats. <laughs> or anybody who is sitting around looking at a 5 or 10 or 15% opt-in rate saying, well, this is great. Because basically... If someone comes to your website through a search engine or an endorse mailing or, or a link, you know, they're interested in the topic, whether it's about, you know, hummingbird feeders or, or building Japanese rock gardens or, or buying real estate on foreclosure or whatever. They have an interest. They wouldn't have clicked the ad or the, the link or done the search if they weren't interested. And so what you're doing is, is and Alex Mandosian calls this the shy yes. You're just asking for a shy yes. You just say, hey, if you're interested in this, I have some free information I'm going to give you. Just fill out your name and email, and you'll be taken immediately to the site, and then I'll follow up with some more information by email. And you can remove yourself at any time. And I talked to a, a techie guy yesterday, and I said, um, what percentage people do you think fill that out? And he said, well, I'd have to say probably just about zero. I said, you know, that's what I thought, too. I truly expected we'd have a 0% opt-in rate. And right. people would just look at it and say, go away. But we have seen we have seen as high as 90% opt-in, and the average is about 50%. And even people who are in highly technical categories where they're, you know, anti-marketing and I don't like, you know, email and, and things like that, even those people have seen an increase from 10 or 20 to, you know, like 30, 40 percent. And so all it does is just capture the name beforehand. And I'll tell you what, it's such a slick process and it's so simple, um, you don't need to complicate it. You just put your opt-in form up on your home page or whatever page you're driving the traffic to, and then the confirm page or the success page or the thank you page or whatever you want to call it, after they opt in, bang, takes them to your sales letter. And then, you know, there's, there's another good part about it, too, actually. If someone fills out the form with the name and email address, they're, you know, two out of five fields away from filling out your full order form and buying your product. <laughs> Plus, you can follow up with them again and again. So, well, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, I truly believe that it's a powerful technique in order to, uh, you know, order to capture names. Obviously, to build a list. At the same time, it's a surefire way to build a list. At the same time, that you are um, that you are, you know, getting people to look at your product and your sales letter, and, and you know, so the list is very solid of people that are interested in what you have to offer. But now, here's here's the other part, and I, you know, I've been looking at this, and I'm and I, and I was look, using myself as an example uh, because I know how I feel is that by by limiting the number of people. You know, many people feel that, well, you know, I'm going to get less people looking at my sales letter. Right. Absolutely. And my answer is, so? Yeah, well, here's the thing. <laughs> if someone is, I mean, there have been times when I've run into name squeeze, and I'm not going to go any further. And, you know, it's on a, on a competitor or somebody else's site. Sure. But I, and I had to stop myself, and I said, gosh, no, I wouldn't go forward. And then I thought, well, duh, I'm not going to buy. I just want to see what he's got. <laughs> I'm here to find out, do a little competitive intelligence. I wasn't going to give him my email address. And then I thought, well, gosh, the people who are going to buy are clearly fill it out. The people who don't buy, well, they're not going to fill it out. They're not going to see the letter. And in some ways, you completely eliminate from their brain the whole sales process that you've put together. They just think, not for me, got to go. And um, what's nice is the little tweak that we got from it. And, and I can't remember if Stephen Pierce came up with this tweak. or. You have just listened to a portion of this big seminar interview. To get the complete version, simply go to www.seminarsecrets.com. Find out how you can attend the next Internet Marketing Big Seminar. And for a very special offer you can't refuse, visit www.seminarsecrets.com.